This is the Sisterhood Society podcast, where three sisters talk life, food, fashion, kids, and everything in between. Become part of our sisterhood where everyone is welcome at our table. Welcome back to the Sisterhood Society podcast. We are so excited to have you. And I'm I'm very sorry that we pushed this a week back. This was supposed to be last week's episode, but me and Tara were super slackers and didn't finish the book because this is the Story Society podcast episode. So Welcome back to Story Society. Um, We do a book pick once a month. Why are you laughing? I'm just so excited. (laughs) I'm so excited. (laughs) Um, We have a book club here on this podcast, and once a month we pick a book. This month was Whitney's pick. What did you choose? Um, So I went out of my comfort zone and chose the Atlas Six, and I go into them blind, which was not a good idea with this book uh, because it's a very specific genre. Yeah. And I felt bad because we essentially we alienated we alienated Tara with this book choice so before we get into the breakdown of the book do we want to do what's good in the sisterhood sure okay you start oh no Tara start because I can't think of one right I was kind of looking at you both and like hoping one of you to just start yeah (laughs) um I had a good piece of cake (laughs) oh my gosh It's always food. For the record, I did not get a fritter this weekend and I tried really hard to get one. I went two spots. (laughs) Didn't work. So um Brian's birthday was Thursday and one of my favorite places to get cake is Sugar Mama's here in town and you get the wedding cake flavor and it's basically vanilla cake with almond frosting. What happened to Janet's? I've never been a huge Janet's fan. Oh, I thought you were. Oh, you. I don't mind. I Isaac's love a, Janet. Yeah, Isaac's a huge fan. I don't mind she it. Said it's not. A huge fan. It's yes. not. A, he is a huge fan. It's not bad. I just like Sugar Mama's better. And um, so anyway, we had that, and Whit made her strawberry lemonade cupcakes, which were fantastic. So Thank I had you. those. And then, um, what did we do this weekend? Did we do something? I feel like we did something. <clears throat> you bathed your child after he bathed himself in ranch. Oh, yes. That wasn't necessarily <laughs> good, though. But he was, like, dipping his fingers in the, like, vat of ranch that we had and then just, like, <laughs> clapping. And ranch was just, like, flying everywhere. And I looked back. He had it, like, all over his face, in his hair, down his arms, and, like, all down his legs. And he was just taking carrots and just, like, like rubbing them in the table because there was ranch everywhere it was disgusting but mm-hmm. he was having a grand old time he's cute so it kind of makes up for it so <laughs> yeah he's it was cute it was one of those situations where you're like oh my gosh I'm so annoyed and same time I was like Brian grab the camera <laughs> <laughs> so anyway um I really killed it on my eating plan this weekend nice this past week I really killed it so, so you did not have a good fritter I did not good I fritters. actually I did really well with my exercise plan and my eating plan I don't feel as like you know when you like wake up after having like let's just say pizza or fritter mm-hmm. let's say you wake up the next day and your fingers are tight because you know you're holding on to water weight mm-hmm. yeah I haven't felt that in a while mm-hmm. so I'm, I'm nice. just, yeah, yeah. I'm noticing even good. on the playback that your face looks very chiseled. Oh, I well, scooted back you. because I thought maybe I was closer to the camera, but I think you're just smaller. <laughs> <laughs> no, I am, I am further back. You guys are further forward because I'm, I'm trying to like round, round it. So we're all in frame. Well, I guess the good news is that I'm here this week. And then this weekend we have really fun plans. We're going to the Coldplay concert and Phil's brothers are coming into town and I feel like I get to see my family a lot, but we don't get to see Phil's family. We get to see one of um, our family members more often on his side, but um, his middle brother, we like never get to see. So we're really excited to see them this weekend. They live in Kansas City and we're doing like a, a Lawson Memor- Memorial hang, which would be really fun. So that I guess that's a, a future good. That yeah. was kind of silly. Well done. Yeah. Okay. So we are going to get into the synopsis of the Atlas Six. Um, I will say, if you haven't read the book or you don't care to, then this won't spoil anything for you. Um, but we will be talking about spoilers. No, this will spoil it for you. <laughs> I was like, wait. <laughs> Sorry. <it> will. <laughs> I said that backwards. This will spoil it for you. So if you don't care to read the book, great. Or if you've already read it. But if you if you haven't read the book, then make sure to read it first before you listen to this episode. Yes. Okay, so the Atlas Six would be categorized as dark academia, which is like the jo- the book genre. And essentially there are six characters that are chosen to become part of this like essentially secret society. And the premise of the book is that there's the Alexandrian library 
um, that still exists or somehow it was preserved because as you guys know, it was actually burned down in yeah. history. So, so they had like this secret library that has like all of these really important documents and manuscripts and the only it's like thing a, it's like a magical library right but and the these thing... six people are like chosen to essentially be the librarians yeah they're will. supposed to also use their magic to protect it yes so these so, are magical people yeah they're a magical <laughs> library. <laughs> they and, all uh, have different powers as well so they were chosen based on the fact that every generation or every so many years they choose the most magical if you yeah, will every 10 years it's like the the top magicians <laughs> yeah or medians as they're called in the yeah, book and the median and most of them come from affluent families so it talks a lot about like class systems and like essentially i think she's well, kind of addressing some um there's three that aren't from higher class families and then there's three that are yeah so i was gonna say I think she's also kind of addressing like classism yeah. in society. Well, and the whole premise is kind of classism for yeah. the library, like depending on how far you make it, depends on how much the library will give you information. Right. Um, so it's, it's, it's interesting. Historians, that's what it is. Like, yeah, I will historians. get into my thoughts about the plot because we have a whole section about plot. But anyways, so there's six characters some can mind read, some can um, see through illusions, some can do actual magic. Like there's a part of the book where Libby and Nico make a wormhole where they can travel through like the wormhole. Hole, yeah. They can stop hole. time. Like there's a lot of different, physicist um, is there's a call. physicist, yeah. Um, there's a botanist that can talk to plants or mainly the, yeah. talks, the plants talk to her. That's they, Raina's like, story. Power. she's like a battery she yeah. can like give people power and then there was a guy that could like adjust your emotions like yes he was an emotions. empath so he can sense people's emotions and actually plant thoughts um so there was kind of an interesting layer between characters that could do physical magic and then some characters that could do emotional or like uh, mental damage through mm -hmm. their magic and there was an argument to be said of like which one is technically more powerful mm -hmm. um, but they were supposed to work together to create a plan on how to protect the library and essentially there is benefits to being part of the secret society because you're going to be set for life financially if you do because you get all these credits and kudos and stuff essentially like more like the most power you could ever have because you also have the information of the library which yeah. also helps you like uh, expand your power based on like what the you knowledge learn about of what yourself. you learn yeah. yeah all knowledge is power essentially right. the whole point of the book and then they so only five of them can move forward they actually have to kill one of them yeah so they find out halfway through the book which we'll grab that information in a second here but essentially that one of them has to be killed which yeah. they didn't know when they committed to this because like being able to get an a, a being able to like expand your power you have to essentially take power from right. one person or so they think yeah because we find out later that, that it wasn't actually true that someone had to die well i think the whole the point was that someone had to die except they were tampering with it to make it seem like someone died and they right. didn't and then it just sets it up for book two which is really annoying to me because it doesn't come out until october so this whole book essentially is laying out the like uh, plot of like not a plot, but yeah. it's more like uh, character driven. So basically, you have to get to know the characters first. What I was gonna say is there was no plot. <laughs> there <laughs> They're was like, not but really. It, ended it was it was like two. paper thin, <laughs> and there was really not a lot going on. Like I watched a ton of reviews and podcasts just to hear other people's thoughts, and I was kind of trying to get a vibe. Like, do people like this? And then people do like it. What do they like about it? And everyone was like, "You get to know the characters. That's really interesting. You get to like the to understand the world in the library." But there's like little to no information at all about really what you gain from the library. There's yeah. nothing about the secret society. I would have liked to see inside their classrooms and what they were learning and how they were gaining extra power and how that like. Yeah, instead there was, it was nothing more, about that. It was more how the characters interacted. Right. And I was just kind of like, okay, we get it. Like, And I felt like I was losing time 
like track of time because at one point they were like oh they're going home for the holidays and I was mm-hmm. like oh we've already been there that long like this is wild because they had just graduated co- some of them had just graduated college which was like in May mm-hmm. so then all of a sudden we had 50 pages was six months like it yeah. was just really weird how it was laid out that way um Tara what were your thoughts <laughs> what was your hot take so first of all let's talk about what it's- you thought of the plot I didn't finish the book, so I only got maybe, well, I thought I was halfway through based off of how much time it was left, but you said I was only like a hundred pages in. Yeah, based on where Tara got to the point where they're all at the, just got there, got to the place and they were discussing whether or not they wanted to share with each other what their powers were. Yeah. That was as far as I got. Yeah. Don't, don't finish it. You won't like it. I mainly felt like I was listening because I did it on Audible. What I first didn't like is that the Audible book is twenty four ninety five or twenty four ninety nine. I thought that was this extremely, is valid for the review. I thought that was extremely expensive for because most of the time they're like Same. twelve to fifteen dollars. Yeah. So I was like twenty five dollars for this is a lot. And then secondly, I felt like there was it felt like a lot of information to just get to that point to get them to you know to the society because I felt like I listened to it for quite a while just to get to that point Mm -hmm. I did find the relationship that seemed like it was expanding and are growing between Nico and Libby would have been an interesting Mm -hmm. plot line to listen to because it felt like they had this weird dynamic and I would have liked to known how that plays out based Mm -hmm. off what you told me it sounds like that there's a relationship that's Mm -hmm. budding um but I yeah, I felt like there was just a lot to get to that point where I still hadn't gotten anywhere. And it also felt like a repeat of Harry Potter to me. Like I literally <laughs> felt like I was like, oh, this is when they get to, you know, Hogwarts. The, yeah. Like it was just kind of strange because it was a similar number of people. And so anyway, right. So the main thing I wanted to start with then before we get into the plot mm-hmm. is the characters. Mm-hmm. So um, essentially Callum was mm-hmm. the empath. Yeah. Who could mess with emotions. Who could mess with the most emotions. Tristan could see through illusions mm-hmm. or possibly create his own illusion. Uh-huh. We don't know yet. Because at the end of the book, um, there was some comment about like him being possibly unattractive. So maybe he was creating an illusion that he, like it says something about his nose being long, like he was potentially not like he was creating an illusion that he was attractive and maybe it's not because objectively they're all supposed to be really good looking and all of you Blake did this whole like character um like setup where you can like learn each character and she said they're all hot and they all could hook up with any one of the each other at any point did you see that video link I sent you kind of how it felt too I was just like oh, can we just not which and I like felt get like back into like the actual story yeah I felt like the hookups were unnecessary yeah like I and was just kind of like I what was is this? wanting to see the most was Libby and Nico because they were like the the magnets to each right. other there's like a push and a pull because they're the one they were the physicists or right. whatever um and together they were like a crazy powerful Right. And like one without the other didn't make sense. And, but they never got together right. and not that I'd like, I just wanted to more of the relationship to build, <laughs> yeah. I guess. And we didn't get that. Instead yeah. we got some weird stuff and I don't even yeah. want to touch on that because it's gross. But well, like- so essentially, so Callum and then we had Tristan, Reina was the botanist who's essentially didn't, she grew up in Japan and a lot of people wanted something from her. So because she was great at growing plants or talking to plants she could have been really influential in like the agriculture world Mm -hmm. and she felt like a lot of people only really wanted her for that skill and so she has like trust issues and all the things and then um Nico and Libby both are physicists where they can essentially create real magic and they they seem to like feed off each other's energy and creating higher magic they're not really ma- like real magic they control the elements so right. like the air like air water um, they can like feel vibrations yeah. and yeah time and space and then uh parissa is the last one and she is um a telepath so she can he- she can read people's minds but she also uses like the art of seduction essentially because she's like gorgeous and people are attracted to her. So she uses that as a way to manipulate people yeah. into telling her or doing things that she wants them to do. I thought her story was interesting because they painted her as like almost like a <clears throat> villain, but that she wasn't necessarily a villain. Yeah, you know? I agree. So I feel like 
like it would be interesting to know how their story expands but I wish that yeah like you said I wish there was more that happened in the book instead of just being like okay book two is coming out and we're gonna um well I'm gonna ask you who your favorite character is but hashtag justice for Reina because she we know nothing about her (laughs) like there was like literally I felt like her whenever it was her stories I'm like Boarsville like there was just nothing going on in her world and I found Callum was kind of supposed to be painted as the villain um I did however find it fascinating with Carissa and Damien Damien is one Dalton thank you it's been a while since I read it (laughs) Dalton um he was like one of their like instructors or whatever and so he'd been there from like the beginning Mm -hmm. of this class of the six people and Parisa immediately found him like fascinating and usually when that happens she like wants to dive into their this brain. person's brain well she did, did Dalton allowed her to they had like some relationship which also was weird how it just like unfolded it was like she used her seduction to like create a place where they trust her enough so that she can get in their brain yeah and she did with him but it was almost like they had a relationship but didn't it was really weird anyways that like in his brain she found like these different this tower of different rooms that were like essentially locked up memories and the main guy that like sought them out to come to this school ended up like using Dalton Mm -hmm. to I it's still not even like uh like explain fully but uh, there's something with dalton that he like uses dalton's brain he's an animator like, controls what they, dalton. yeah so atlas really wants to essentially keep him controlled because when prissa was in his brain atlas was showing up in the memories and saying prissa get out yeah so atlas is actually the villain if you guys like spoiler um so he kind of but no i read about it oh he i did a whole thing so atlas is actually because i was at the end i was like wtf i just read like i was like (laughs) what what i don't even know understand this ending so i like did a deep dive essentially atlas wants to create his own society he wants to take over the alexandrian Mm -hmm. society so he didn't recruit them to protect the library he recruited them as his like team to basically he wants to be a new god a new world essentially he wants and he chose the most powerful people to help him to do that and he was partnering or trying to partner with ezra which which is is libby's Libby's boyfriend. boyfriend but he found she out was like i'm learning so much i know she's like wow <laughs> like, he found oh, out, stuck it out his true intentions and basically is now trying to battle against yeah atlas. so atlas and ezra were in a class together um to be a part of the society and then they realized one of them had to die and ezra was going to get chosen to die mm-hmm. essentially so ezra is kind of like a time hopper he can jump on different planes of time and he created like oh Ezra was the one that also created the illusion right that someone had died but someone didn't Mm -hmm. um in their class because they didn't want to kill anybody so Ezra was the one that like had to quote unquote die Mm -hmm. had the illusion that he died but he didn't actually die um and then he ended up meeting Libby he's like stayed his same age because he was skipping through time I feel like this is there's for a friend's so reference. This is like bamboozled. Like, this is. is like go up the wheel of mayhem and spin twice and then turn left. It's like literally so confusing. Really, if you didn't read the book, you're like you're not what explaining is going it well. On. Okay, so anyways, Ezra and Atlas were teaming up to essentially try to take over the society because they thought it was stupid that someone had to die every time. Right. And so they made it seem like Ezra died, but he didn't. Mm-hmm. But Atlas was able then able to then get into the society. And 10 years later, he's kind of not over it, but he's like, um, he gets to choose what or has a lot of influence over which people are in the next class. Um, so Atlas and Ezra are like building their own personal like team like Mm -hmm. Kate said to essentially take over but it turns out Atlas then is becoming uh, more determined to essentially create his own world because he wants to be a god is what he said with Libby and Nico's power Mm -hmm. along with the botanist who's like a battery Mm -hmm. Reina 
and then he's got um like the other people's skill like right. all together they can essentially like create an entire they'll destroy this earth and create an entirely new one ezra time hops and sees that it's going to be destroyed mm -hmm. and so then he's like whoa like my partner in crime all of a sudden is like turning evil like this is not what i signed up for type of thing right and that's kind of where it ends like yeah not so anything i think what i felt like what i was wondering was essentially a lot of people were upset that olivy blake didn't tell them that it was a series because they would have gone into it differently mm -hmm. or possibly not read it as in general because mm -hmm. a lot of people don't love series they they think that dark academia should be a standalone um and not have series and I kind of agree with that like I feel like it even if it was longer I would have enjoyed just it being a one book thing so I don't mm -hmm. really exactly know how you're going to draw this out the way that it did and when you're reading it it felt like it was written to be confusing mm -hmm. and so it was a little bit frustrating because then you're like 40 pages left and you're like um what's happened like yeah. nothing has happened I feel like she went on like she's very knowledgeable about physics yeah. and mathematics and things like that and so like she was went through and was explaining like these world problems right. but I was like this isn't helping with the, your plot so, so yeah we kind of talked about the plot I will say overall I found it fascinating like the storyline and I'm like curious so I ended up really liking the book mm -hmm overall right but there were like problems with it that I was like mm, right like could we have more information please right <laughs> so we talked about the plot what did you think of the writing style I think same with like the overall book like I liked I liked all the information in, that she gave mm -hmm. and like the concepts I wish there was more to it and also yeah. there is yeah it seemed like she would go with the different points of view of each character mm -hmm. and that was fine but like not a whole lot happened with each character <laughs> as she did that tara's contribution to this podcast is her coughs <laughs> her coughing in the corner no you're you're fine mm -hmm. um i was gonna say i feel like the writing felt like almost pretentious like it was trying to match the people in the book but I felt like it was unnecessarily confusing. Like, I felt like a lot of the time I was reading it and I'd have to reread things and be like, I don't even know what the point of that whole page was. Yeah. It was um, just almost like a status thing to like, like show filler. that she was knowledgeable. Yeah, I didn't love, I don't love the writing style because I feel like a majority of people aren't reading fantasy to get smarter, you yeah. know? Like, we're not really like out here being like, tell me about- I'm also books. trying to take the bar next month. Like, no, <laughs> we're literally- just reading it for fun and I and maybe I don't I haven't let me preface this in saying I'm not like a very um skilled fantasy reader because I don't read a ton but I've read enough that I feel like I know like Sarah J Mass is a very readable author like yeah. um A Court of Thorns and Roses I didn't open it and be like wait let me go back and reread the last three pages I just read mm -hmm. so I feel like it was a little bit different where I felt like I was kind of struggling and the pages were so freaking big, first of all. Yeah, like you read it on Kindles, so it, it was dense. I guess mm -hmm. that's where I'm looking for. Like the writing just felt really dense to the point where if you're not, you had to be like fully dialed in, yeah. paid, paying attention to every word or you would miss things. I don't know if you, how'd you feel about it on audio? I felt like, well, I was listening to it on a faster speed. So you had to really dial into what they were saying. What I didn't love about it on Audible was they had multiple voices. Right but they weren't using them, which was a little bit odd. Like they had multiple people that narrated it, but it was like, if it was Nico, they would do the voice for Libby as well as Nico, rather than oh, having weird. the person that's that annoying. was doing Libby's voice. Like so someone like paying for a full cast. Like that's weird. Mm -hmm. It was a little bit strange. And so it was like, <clears throat> the voice wasn't consistent. Mm -hmm. So like when it was from Nico's perspective, he would sound like himself. And then it was like this girl's version of voice. Right of that same person but then when it was Libby's perspective it would be her voice but then it would be like Nico mm. it was just kind of strange so I felt like you had to really be focused to be able to catch all of the characters yeah, because the voices harder. weren't yeah they weren't consistent yeah for such a big book you would hope mm. that more happened yeah I mean to to wrap up the plot essentially they all get there they've been recruited by Atlas that's mm -hmm. and, and, and another podcast I'm stuttering so much another podcast I listened to mentioned like 
they wished it wasn't named the Atlas Six because that kind of gives it away, which I never realized. I never connected that because if you were, you if you are someone who's a very like intuitive reader, you would have been like, why is it Atlas is Six? Because he's just a random recruiter mm, yeah. that works for the library. So that does kind of give away the punchline. Like literally, if you yeah, know yeah. at the end of the book, um, and I thought that was a really interesting thought that you're like, oh, that makes you wonder why. Because it could have just been called the Alexandrian Society, the Alexandrian Six. Like the fact that they put Atlas in the title kind of gives away, I mean, you don't know that until the end, but if you're someone who thinks really deeply about that thing, those things, you could have guessed that early yeah. on. Um, so yeah, that was kind of interesting, but basically, yeah, they're recruited. They're all different, powerful people. They're recruited they're staying at this place. They don't even know what's going on. They're just going to the library and learning, mm-hmm. trying to use each other's power, build their relationships. That's really, really all we're, yeah, we're watching is them. Figure out their own powers too. And then it's halfway like- through the book, when Parissa mm-hmm. finds out from Dalton's mind that one of them has to die because mm-hmm. she sees that in his head, then they all start to figure out like, oh my gosh, one of us has to die. Who are we going to kill? Mm-hmm. And so the last hundred pages is really them deciding would you kill someone or would you try to save them? Who are you interested in killing? And that was basically the dialogue of the last hundred pages mm-hmm. um, until you find out the, the plot twist in the last three pages about Ezra and Atlas. So that really sums up, you know, majority of the book. Mm-hmm. So would you read the sequel? Um, I plan to because I, I'm the type where if I start something, I need to finish it. Yeah. And so I'll always be wondering like what's going to happen right now I will say if the sequel is not if the sequel does the same thing that the first book did I'll Mm -hmm. be like really annoyed well so I looked it up and she's writing two and three at the same time so they come out like closer together which is a huge thing so this book was self-published and went viral on like the internet TikTok and the internet okay that makes and like read it and so then she got so much hype behind it that a a lot of people were like this is a great book but it needs an editor Mm -hmm. and so she got enough hype that a um a publisher approached her about doing a book deal and then signed her on for the um series but nobody knew it was a series which is a lot of readers are really frustrated by um Anyways, and so there is a book two and three in her book deal. Cool. So the next one is called, um, I can't remember. Dang it. It was on the tip it. of my tongue, but it's white. I saw the cover the other day. They just did the cover reveal. Um, and then I don't know anything about the third one. Did you ever watch The Umbrella Society on Netflix? Oh, okay. This kind of reminds me of The Umbrella Society because there's like five kids that were adopted by this like really wealthy guy and they all have like their own powers oh, and funny. Like, one of them ends up disappearing and they end up finding him like when they're in their 20s and then one of them becomes like really evil mm-hmm. I didn't end up watching the second season but it was just really interesting because mm-hmm. it kind of mimics the Umbrella Society so if anybody has their the Umbrella Academy something anyways I've heard it also mimics uh Six of Crows which you've you haven't, haven't read, that, read that but one. you've watched you've watched Shadow and Bone on Netflix I have I watched the first season of that that's really interesting so yeah I don't know we'll Make see I was gonna ask if you were surprised by the ending or or were you personally frustrated that it was a series once you got to the end <laughs> I was personally frustrated because I was hoping that more at least if you're gonna move move on to the second book at least kind of tie up some loose ends you know like uh give us more information on the dynamic of like Nico and Libby and Mm -hmm. like Nico ended up freaking out when Libby disappeared and like but you you wouldn't have known that they even really cared about each other up until that point I was like you had the entire book to talk about them I really thought that it was you know in romance there's all these different tropes I really thought it was going to be like an enemies to lovers yeah but they really set them up to be more friends yeah and and, but there's this, I was telling Tara at lunch, I was like, I feel like they're setting up this weird, either there's going to be a romance in book two potentially, but there's like a weird, almost like soul connection between the two of them because mm-hmm. Nico is like really visibly and audibly upset when she, uh, that's a piece we missed. Uh, Ezra essentially like helps Libby oh, yeah. disappear at the end as the one and makes fakes that she died so yeah. that she doesn't actually get killed. Yeah. So then he has her somewhere in like some plane somewhere, like yeah. a, like a, not a actual Another like world. flying plane, but yeah, yeah. like a different a universe dimension. or dimension. Yeah. Um, so he has her somewhere in a dimension. She can't manipulate it to get out. 
So, mm -hmm. so we don't know that yet. So we think that we that's think like the cliffhanger she's trying to end us on for book two. Yeah. So then Nico, when he sees the illusion that Libby is dead, like lying on the floor dead, like bleeding, Nico is like visibly like crazy sad about it. Mm -hmm. And then Tristan can see through illusions and yeah. he's like, she's not dead. Yeah. He's like, no, that's an illusion. That's not actually Libby there on the mm -hmm. floor. Everybody's like, but this looks like her. This and there's like so real. much blood and they're like, it looks like she had been like shot or yeah. something. Also, they had decided to kill Callum because he has been like the non, like, and Alice kind of set it up that way that he was like the one that people wouldn't really like. But then Callum has this like weird like relationship with Tristan and like Tristan that can't could kill him. potentially be romantic. Yeah, so. I don't know. It's weird. I don't like it. I'm just like, what is with this whole like everybody is just like, can can we just have more clear, concise boundaries? Like, yeah, I don't know. So that was the part that I was just like, can we just not? And like, I kind of feel like they could have just like, like you didn't have to be there to hook up. Like you, that's not like I like. I feel like you could have done that outside this societies yeah. <laughs> like there's like why'd you come here just to do that yeah. so it was it was weird that the I guess what I'm saying is I feel like the, the reason we think it's weirder that it wasn't like necessary is it didn't feel like it was anything to do with the plot yeah, the storyline story like I don't care if there's relationships in books it was just more the fact that there was so much like intermingling of so hookups that you were kind of like why is this all maybe happening? because the plot was missing like right. a lot of the plot was missing and instead we had these unnecessary hookups and you're like does that have something to do with like is that something to do with this is mm -hmm. going to help something with that right like, and so but instead it didn't you're just like <laughs> okay what was the point of that I don't know. it's yeah. really annoying in that aspect but I think the story overall where she's going with it is going to be interesting and maybe now that she's got an editor we'll be like yes this yeah is great and I think that this book was edited from the original version um, but yeah, it's, I guess I wasn't frustrated by it being a series. I just felt like book one for me was not a five star. Like no, yeah, I more spent, character -driven I, sure. and I'm not a character driven person. I'm definitely more like a plot driven type of reader. Mm -hmm. And I was, I was struggling with feeling connected to the story because we were getting so much about the characters, but to be honest, we weren't really getting anything about them. It was just dialogue. It wasn't like you were really learning that much about the characters. Because again, yeah, we didn't, didn't know really, anything about Reyna, her past life. Like, you didn't have um, a chance to really connect to any of the characters either. Because they were all, none of them were super likable. Right. Um, you had like Libby, who was kind of annoying. Like she was maybe the most quote unquote likable. because She, she was, was actually most, my favorite. She was the most like pure of heart, but she was also the one that asked a lot of the questions and that all the others would get annoyed with her. And mm -hmm. then you had like Tristan who would like, who is really rough and gruff, but like, yeah, he had the most connection to each of the different people. Mm -hmm. Then you had Callum who nobody liked. Then you had Parisa who mm -hmm. you like essentially wanted to stay away from because she's like trouble. And then Raina was quiet in the corner, didn't get to know her. Nico was like likable, but also kind of annoying. So mm -hmm. like, it was just, you kind of went through all the people right. and you're just like, who can I like? <laughs> yeah, it was hard to root for anybody. I yeah. did find it weird that Nico all of a sudden cared about Libby because in the book, it seemed like they didn't give a crap about each yeah. other. And there wasn't a buildup of where their relationship was like at least even tolerable. Mm -hmm. So that was odd that then like when he thought she was dead, he was all of a sudden devastated because yeah. they were always just like rivals. Yeah. And she, all of you like even said that they're like a pair. Like yeah. they always like Atlas actually approached them together to recruit them so in the whole book you their stories are so intertwined even though there's no romantic connection between mm -hmm. the two of them at least I not felt yet like, though that it in at least the short time that I actually read it or listened to it is that those two felt like they had sexual tension between the two of them yeah but then well, he has that weird relationship with his roommate he's got his roommate yeah. that which like, I can't tell if he's very like in love with him or yeah. if he's that it was didn't good. it didn't seem like he was in love with him but he was extremely protective of him like it was like his family or his brother but then that went nowhere I'm like mm -hmm. I don't understand you got this roommate that's like a part fish or something <laughs> isn't he it's like part <laughs> mermaid yeah but he's he can like get into people's dreams like and he can also it seems like he can like All he has reason um why I quit the book. <laughs> Tara's like he said yeah, he's part it. fish <laughs> Tara's, Tara's like, like oh gosh <laughs> no he his mom's like a mermaid or something and his dad is like some I don't know but anyways he's really powerful mm -hmm. like this Nico's 
roommate because he can get into people's dream worlds and like get information or like i don't even know like um uh safes like get mm-hmm. di- like the dials to safe so his mom uses he uh, manip- she manipulates him for yeah. what he can do for because her she's like this really she's like a con artist she's a really <laughs> dirty mermaid <laughs> <laughs> and i was just kind of don't like, offend the mermaid I community don't, i don't understand <laughs> really the whole thing she like i don't even know it, that that part of the story too is just so weird because she would throw in these like subplots that you're just like wait can we focus on the main plot because the subplots like i feel like we don't need those just yet we need we need a plot first right you know? okay so all that being said in conclusion let's give it a rating okay i i would say mine's a three and a half i'm giving it a hopeful four in in hopes that she she wraps it up in the next two books and it actually turns out good yeah i i'm still probably going to finish it for the sake of seeing what's happening but i it's like it wasn't as enjoyable of a read because it was hard to understand yeah i'm hoping now that she kind of has like a direction of where a a plot is going that she actually sticks to that in book two and three remember when tara gave a five last time thinking it was five out of (laughs) ten we were like you gave this a five (laughs) what was the last book oh the Greenwich the, yeah, Park. Greenwich yeah. Park, yeah. <laughs> I didn't finish it so I don't feel like I can yeah you it. probably shouldn't because it's not fair to the author mm-hmm, true um okay so our next book pick next month mm-hmm. will be Tara's so mm-hmm. would you like to announce what you're yes so I'm sticking with nonfiction. yay Wait, <laughs> so I hate nonfiction, but I'll I'll give it a go because you gave my book a go um what I'm gonna do is Matthew McConaughey's autobiography hey okay that I can do (laughs) because if you had chosen like a business book I would have been like oh my gosh (laughs) well we were just saying we don't know how many of our listeners are like entrepreneurs so maybe that would be boring to them but you do like memoirs I I actually have already listened to it and it was fantastic and it's narrated by him yeah I'm also excited but I'm probably gonna have to re-listen to it green light Um, green light okay I've heard really good things about it it has really good reviews so I thought that would be a good one it's a excellent book oh good okay mm-hmm. you're gonna love I'm, it i'm 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 but hopeful. listen to it on audio yeah because he narrates it and it's like such a pleasant it's just such a fun experience it's like my tom hanks book where i was just like i just love listening to tom hanks <laughs> it's kind of the same because he has that iconic voice yeah. Yeah. and he's telling his own story so it makes it even more interesting and just the way that his like timing with things is amazing so hmm. you'll like it mm-hmm. i'm gonna have to re-listen to it though because i won't remember like specific stories unless I do well and when we went to when we were in 30a we went to Sundog Books and that was one of the ones that she suggested yeah the um gal at the bookstore she was saying if you're looking for a good autobiography she highly recommended that one yeah so so that one's kind of always been in the back of my mind and I haven't had a chance to you know just listen to it, listen yeah. To it. yeah so I thought it might be a good one Love we'll it. just go around I so, will say if you like fantasy and you're not into the atlas six check out care caraval caraval yeah caraval um kate told me about it and i can't stop thinking about it i'm on the i'm on the third book now (laughs) i know you're further than i am now it is fantasy but it is actually really interesting that book like had me in a chokehold until i finished it like i literally couldn't put it down i I read it in one sitting where you literally cannot put it down i read Mm -hmm. book two in one well not one sitting but i read it one day yesterday yeah it's basically about a magical carnival (laughs) <laughs> that people it, go and you don't know what's real and reality and what's an illusion. It's like a game. It's a game. It's yeah. like over five days. It's a game. And you've got the headmaster, which is legend. Nobody knows who he is. Who he is. Kind of like the Wizard of Oz. Yeah. And then the the performers that work for him all are like sworn to secrecy, and they actually have like a like a a magical thing on them that holds their tongue. They can't tell anybody who he is. And if you win care of all you win like like the first book it was like a wish Mm -hmm. and the second book I'm not even sure what the second book was you win I can't remember but anyways um there's a love story involved it's fascinating it's actually really interesting it is really good too I feel like you might like it (laughs) for for a fantasy it might you might actually the atlas six is really not up your alley this this is not as weird 
weird as the Atlas Six probably. This one is definitely like more like magical and but it's interesting because it's like almost there's like a like, whodunit too, <laughs> because there's like there's a murder, kind of murder mystery, mystery element to it, yeah. And then there's also it, it's just really interesting. But did you like the like did you like the thriller genre of Greenwich Park? Like I didn't mind. Yeah. Okay. So, so if this I is that kind of time, like that, but mm-hmm. with a little bit of magic, <laughs> but a carnival. <laughs> It's not like a carnival. It's like a, a whole nother world. It's it's really interesting. Will you guys tell me if my next book is a Stephen King? Would you get oh too scared? Gosh, maybe. Someone was telling me that like you can't read suspense until you've read Stephen King, and I've never read one before. And I'm like, what if I pick that? But then I might be too scared. <laughs> I've seen his movies, and they're not really anything. That's Cujo. That's about. Cujo right there. Um. <laughs> Okay, anyways, thank you guys so much for listening to this episode of Story Society Podcast. We're so grateful to have you. If you liked what you heard, please leave a five-story, five-star review. Um, and let us know what you thought on um, the book as well. If you read it, message us on Instagram or comment in the YouTube video because we want to know what you thought of the Atlas Six. And we will see you next month for Green Light. All right, guys, thank you so much. We'll see you in the next one.